Hi guys, welcome to another video. I asked you guys on Instagram a little while ago now what videos you would want to see first, which videos I should prioritize. A lot of you guys voted for this video, which is reading the highest and lowest rated books on my physical TBR. It's very gloomy out, so that's why the lighting is kind of dull. It's not very bright. And then my dog is trying to play and squeak his toy while I'm filming. We're just gonna disregard the squeaking, okay? So I'm a little excited for this video, obviously, because of the highest rated books I'm going to be reading. Hey, you're too loud right now. But then obviously the lowest rated ones aren't very exciting, <laughs> but one of them is kind of. I have. I have a good feeling about one of them. The other one, I feel like it could be a complete catastrophe. So I have no idea how that's gonna go, but that's the point of the video, right? So we're gonna see, you know, if the highest rated books are worth the hype. We're gonna see if the lowest rated ones need a little bit more praise and recognition. You know, maybe they're just a little underrated and I'm here to tell you whether they're gonna be worth it or not. One of these though, I don't have to tell you much about because you know. You know this one. I know you know this one. Yeah, and the other one, obviously. They're very popular books. One pretty recently popular and one not so recently popular. So I'm excited for the little mix that we're gonna get here. I'm gonna show you all the books I'm gonna be reading. I think I have a total of four that I'm gonna read two highest rated and two lowest rated. So I think that's gonna be the plan for this moment. I have no idea how long this vlog is gonna take me, but it's going to take however long it takes for me to get through these four books. Let's talk about how I chose these books. I'm using the ratings and reviews on Goodreads as opposed to Storygraph, which isn't as popular yet. And so what I did was I went to my want to read shelf and I filtered it to show me average ratings. So that means it shows you the highest rated book for the amount of ratings it's gotten, if that makes sense. So some of them, like the new one I'm going to be reading, doesn't have as many reviews, not as many people have read it, but within that small, not small, because a lot of people have read it, but it's smaller, right? Because it just came out. But within such a few amount of ratings, it's gotten the most like five stars, four stars. So that's what average rating means. I think you guys could probably figure that out on your own. You're smart people. Just wanted to get that out there so you understand how I picked these books. And then same thing for the lowest. I just went to the average rating all the way down to the bottom, I think. I think. Yeah, I don't know. Goodreads, I'm not gonna get into how Goodreads works because it's a nightmare and we all know it needs some work, but I figured it out and I have the four books that I've chosen. So let me actually grab the other three because I have one right here. Wait, I only have two of the other ones. One of them I'm reading as an ebook slash audiobook, but give me a second. Okay, let's talk about the highest rated books I'm going to be reading. The first one I have is the one you guys all know and lots of you also love, A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. This obviously no surprise to anyone, right? This is a very highly rated book, highly loved, most people's favorite in this series. I thought it was perfect because I just read A Court of Thorns and Roses like a couple months ago. And so it's perfect timing for me to pick this up because I need to pick it up and it works well for this vlog, okay? I am going to be reading first. I have started it, but I'm only on page like 16. This is one that I'm going to be reading and testing out to see if it's worth the hype, but you know, I think it is, but you never know, right? Okay, so that's what we're gonna, we're gonna find out and see how that goes. The next highest rated book is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This book has obviously gotten lots of recent recognition, especially because it was a book of the month pick. Lots of people are raving about this book recently. I didn't get it the first time it was on book of the month. I don't know why. I think it just looked a little too cheesy for me, like the cover. So I kind of just bypassed it and I ended up getting like an add-on. I didn't even pick for September, but then everyone was talking about it in September and I was like, Dang, I probably should have picked that one up. So I got it in my October box, as well as some other things, but I have FOMO now. I need to read it. it sounds cute. Apparently it's like steamy and everything too, which has a very unsuspecting cover of that. I don't know, but maybe not. I don't know, it, it just looks, I don't know what 
it is about the I don't know what I'm thinking um but it's a really cute cover the colors are adorable I can see why lots of people are loving it I think it was probably the science you know the hypothesis I'm not super into science I'm not super into stuff like that in general so I think that's why I completely bypassed it willing to give it a shot and I have I hope because everyone is loving it so like why wouldn't I right the two lowest rated books that I've picked sweet bitter by Stephanie Dandler this one Oh, I should be talking about the ratings that they're giving. Okay, hold on, I'll do that in a second. This one gets a, gosh, I should have looked this up before, dang it. Okay, so this one doesn't get great reviews because I don't know why. I didn't really read the reviews, I just looked at the ratings. But this sounds like such a fun story to me. I think maybe the writing and the execution are what fail it. I'm completely matching with the book, by the way. So maybe the author just kind of missed the mark with this, because it sounds like a great, fun, self-discovery, coming-of-age story. The girl moves to New York, because she's like a huge foodie or something. So she starts to work at this restaurant, and you know, I don't know, self self-discovery, coming-of-age in New York with lots of food involved. So I just think that sounds really fun, but apparently people are let down by it. It has got over 60,000 ratings on Goodreads, but the average rating is 3.3. .3. So that's pretty low. It sounds like it could be just a very average book. I'm interested to see what I think of it because the way I rate my books with the star ratings, three star means I still really liked it. So. Is it that bad for people that the majority are rating it three stars? Does that mean I'm gonna give it less than three stars? Or are people just crazy and do, and do they just not get it? Or, you know, like maybe this is completely up my alley, but uh, I don't know, so we'll see. That's, that's the whole point. And then the second lowest rated, well, this one is actually the lowest rated, like this one's a little bit higher, but the other one is Catherine House by Elizabeth I want to say Thomas. I don't know. Let me look it up. Ka yeah, Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Wow, I got it. This one has, oh, okay, so this one has a lot less reviews. 16,635 ratings, and the average is 3.12. That's incredibly low. So I'm very, very scared for that one, and that's the one that I have the ebook and audiobook for. I don't know. So that's going to be kind of interesting to see that one play out for sure but then let's see the love hypothesis this one has already 38,644 ratings with an average of 4.48 so that's impressive and then a court of mist and fury you know has lots of ratings it has 531,523 ratings with an average of 4.59. That tells me enough to know that these are very loved, amazing books, right? These were high up on that list of highest rated, but they weren't like literally the highest rated on my TBR just because I wanted to stick to mostly my physical TBR. So something that I either already had or could get very, very quickly. Also on there was obviously lots of Brandon Sanderson, which is, not what I'm feeling like reading at the moment. Like his Way of Kings series was all on there, higher than Aquamath, I think. But this is already really thick, but I was not willing to pick up a Brandon Sanderson right now for this vlog, so that was just not the move, right? So that's not what I was gonna do. And then Catherine House was literally like the lowest one I could find. And then this one was pretty close to that as well. Those are the three books, or four, sorry. I just don't have Catherine House, but these, are going to be the four books that I read for this vlog. Uh, like I said, I'm going to start with Aquamath. I already have. That is the intro. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to start with this and I'll check in once I make my way through a big chunk of it or when I have any thoughts or reactions I would like to share with you guys. Yeah, um, it's gonna be probably a long vlog or like if this vlog is going to be over a long period of time most likely just so that I can get to all of these books on top of the rest of my October TBR and stuff because I am starting this on October 8th and it's the day before Thrillathon and all of that but point is I have lots of books I need to read but I am trying to read these four as fast as I can so that I can talk about them for the vlog. I will see you guys later 
after I make good progress with Aquamath. Hello guys. Um, it's been a while since I've updated this vlog, but that's because I have been reading so many other books for different reasons. So I haven't been able to prioritize Aquamath that much until just like a couple days ago. I'm currently on page 262. And if you're wondering how I'm feeling about it, this. This is how I'm feeling about it. <laughs> so I'm definitely having the best time annotating this book. I am really, really into it, really loving it, and I'm not even necessarily in like a fantasy mood right now. This is just so good. Just such a guilty pleasure, and I love these characters. Totally understanding the hype totally get it again like if you know me you know that fantasy is not necessarily my genre but i'm loving the vibes in here having the best time already feels like a five star also if this doesn't tell you enough that's how i feel that's how i feel okay so i'm almost halfway not quite yet but hoping to get halfway soon because i am participating in the citadel readathon this weekend uh it's friday night at 10 p.m but if you didn't know mel reads her patreon is called the citadel and we do like a weekend readathon every month so that is happening this weekend and hopefully that will help me get lots of reading done for this vlog in particular. Yeah, so I'm hoping to finish this very soon. I don't have much to say, plus I don't wanna say too much. Even though it's been around for a long time, I know it is a big deal for some people. So I don't wanna spoil it for anyone who has yet to get to it and really wants to. I would definitely recommend it if you're into fantasy. Even if you're not into fantasy like me, I'm loving it. So this is rightfully so highly rated on Goodreads. Benji, can you please stop it? Please stop it. No one asked you. Hey, quiet. I mean, favorite character right now, I would be very basic and say recent, but I also am liking Azrael at the current moment. And I don't, like, I obviously know, I've heard from people, like, who the couples are. I kind of hear things, you know, here and there, but I try not to pay attention to it or try not to, like, dig deeper into what people are saying when they're talking about this series because I don't want to get that spoiled, obviously, but I do pretty much know who the end gamers are. I think that's kind of fun to, like, now see it in the beginning of the series and seeing those characters meeting for the first time and like knowing in the back of my head who's gonna end up with who. So yeah, I don't know. It's kind of fun from that perspective. I might do another update before I actually finish it, but I just wanted to pop on because I haven't filmed a clip for this vlog in a while. So I'm here in the full swing of it for this vlog. I kind of had to take a pause on it just for a thrillathon and stuff, but really hoping to knock out these books this week. <laughs> So I finished Aquamath last night. These are my final tabs for this thing. Uh, very, very satisfying. Love that. Really loved this book, all right? Okay, so the hype is there. Totally understand it. I just don't know if I personally can give it five stars, actually, after thinking about it for like a whole day. Nothing against the book. I just think because fantasy's not my thing and because I'm not a huge like fae stan, you know, just like not in general, not my type of book i feel like i can't give it five stars because i try to save my five stars you know for like the best of the best for me but with that being said i gave akatar four stars and i can see how this one is better than the first book so i think i'm going to give it 4.5 i really loved all the characters that you meet the plot was pretty interesting for the most part it just did lose me in some areas and that's simply because it's just fantasy but it was still really really good and the ending everyone talks about the last like 40 pages like so much happened and it was really really good loved it i'm just not going to give it five stars it's also like really ridiculous like all these pink tabs are either like moments that i loved or found ridiculous so there were a lot of things in this that i found ridiculous but you know that's fine that's all part of the entertainment of this book right so lots of pink in here really glad i read it i have no idea when i will pick up the next book it probably will be won't be for a while but i am going to continue with the series but yeah 4.5 out of 5 stars definitely deserving of 
one of the highest rated books because Sarah J Maas really knows how to write fantasy romance with, you know, a good substantial plot, very fun characters that you will absolutely love and it'll feel like home to you sometimes, you know, coming back to this series. Totally understand how this series is people's favorites, how it's a guilty pleasure, how it's something that they are very sentimental towards, you know. I wish I read it when I was younger or, you know, not, not young because it is adult at least this one is very adult um but i do wish maybe i hopped on this bandwagon a little earlier but that didn't like take away from my experience definitely did enjoy it and i was very very invested that is the story there that's all i have to say with that next order of business that is the first book i finished for this vlog oh my gosh it's been so long that i've been doing that but i'm um, very happy to have completed that book so now i've moved on to one of the lowest rated books on my physical TBR and the first one I'm starting with there is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas and I have this one digitally I have the audiobook and the ebook so I started that today and was planning to like finish it today I think it's possible still to do that it is currently 8 p.m. and I'm over halfway in Catherine House I believe I have four hours left in the audiobook so on two times speed I can listen to that in two hours I will probably finish that tonight and this one has been going well already i mean in the very beginning the opening scene was very interesting very weird different but i loved where it was going and i really you know was like i hope this book continues to stay strong i don't know why people don't love this book we'll see once i get more into it but still like i'm not hating it i'm actually very interested in what's happening it's definitely a book that is for you or it's not for you so like depends on the person i guess you know what kind of books interest you in general but so far it is been for me i mean it's not been not for me you know so taking this as a good sign now that i'm over halfway i'm still enjoying it still wanting to see where the story goes and all that kind of stuff it is definitely very weird and different it's like dark academia but very cult-ish and that's kind of what Catherine house is it's this three-year school that people are sent to go to and they can have like no contact to the outside world and they're discouraged to even talk about their lives before they came to the school so Catherine House is very much like a cult and these kids get you know kind of sucked in and kind of brainwashed kind of put in a trance about you know why they're there and who that makes them the type of person that they become now that they're at this school but I don't know the vibes are very interesting I'm, I'm digging the vibes very descriptive atmospheric and stuff not a lot of like answers to the plot I know a lot of people have DNF'd this book because they just weren't getting the answers that they wanted. There wasn't enough character buildup and stuff that people just were immediately turned off by it because of that. But if you go into it somewhat blind, like I did, I, I didn't really know anything about it, but I, like I said, loved the opening scene and it really made me want to stick it out to the end. Like even just first couple of pages made me feel invested. So um, it's definitely something different than I've ever read before, but we shall see how the rest of it goes. But yeah, I'm very excited that I'm not hating it. So basically like what's happening right now is the main character is trying to figure out like the behind the scenes of this cultish place. You now she's making all these friends. It's like school. So there's parties and there's classes and tests and things like that. Things happen she's starting to like want to uncover the secrets of this school like what makes it different and I don't know it's just very very weird those are my thoughts now at this point so I will check back in with you guys once I've finished it and give you my final review and all of that and then I will be picking up another highest rated book so I will see you guys when that happens <laughs> Wish I could say I was finally over you But that's not the truth mm -hmm. Everyone always keep falling in love again I don't understand Maybe it will pass by someone save me For I pass out, I'm too lonely To be done on my drink at this page Okay, 
Hello, I'm gonna do a quick update. If you hear background music, it's my husband. He's listening to it very loud in his headphones, <laughs> but you can still really hear it. Hopefully that doesn't get copyrighted. Anyways, so I finished Catherine House and it actually did not disappoint me really. I was pleasantly surprised by it. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of five stars. Definitely not for everyone and I can see why people don't like it, but I had a pretty okay time with it. it wasn't amazing and not my favorite thing I've ever read, but I did really like it for what it was, you know? So it is very weird and a strange concept. I found it pretty interesting and there wasn't really anything for me to hate <laughs> other than the ending. Like I didn't love the way it ended, but I would definitely say that, you know, it depends on the person, but you might like it if you read the synopsis and it sounds interesting to you or if you usually go for kind of weirder, edgy books, I would recommend maybe trying this one out. But I understand why the ratings it does get are mostly average so i did give it an average rating of 3.5 it had its moments where i was like oh this could actually be maybe a four star but overall that's how i felt about it those are my thoughts on that so now as you saw earlier i started reading the love hypothesis and i'm on page 70 now absolutely loving this book it is so 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 good i kind of had a feeling it was going to be because it's just everybody's favorite book right now and it's completely adorable. Janelle and I are actually buddy reading it together and she's obsessing over it as well. So cute. Like the writing is perfection. The couple, the characters, they're freaking adorable. They're just perfect for this fake dating trope. I don't normally like fake dating, I feel like. The only other one I read was Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and I didn't love that, but I think it's just because I didn't like fall in love with the characters as much. But this one, right away, I'm just 100% here for Olive and Adam. So really, really cute. Adam is hot too, so that helps. Um, and I love the relationship that Olive has with her best friend in this book. Her name is On, I think is how you say it. But yeah, so I'm very, very happy to be reading this. And I just want to binge it. Like, I don't want to do anything else right now. I just want to read for the rest of the day and, like, hopefully finish it by tomorrow. But we shall see. But yeah, so this is my other highly rated one, obviously. It is so well-deserved. Totally understand why this has such a high average rating. Yeah, I'm having a very, very fun time. And I'm kind of sad to be having to, like, transition to a low rated book again after reading this one. It's kind of sad. That is the plan. I'm not sure when I'm gonna be able to get to my fourth and final book for this vlog because I am leaving in a couple days for a trip. So I I will try and squeeze it in, but if not, then I might just have to carry this vlog over again for like a longer period of time than planned. Yeah, I don't know. I'll get to it when I get to it. I will probably come back to give you some more updated thoughts on the love hypothesis and just continue obsessing over it with you guys. All right, so now I'm up to page... 204 of the love hypothesis i read all of this yesterday and i was able to get up to page 204 i need to finish it today okay that's that's the plan because i'm leaving to go out of town tomorrow and i am not bringing this with me i'm bringing different books so we need to finish it today and i only have 150 pages left so that will be doable but still absolutely loving this book the writing is perfection the characters are perfection freaking everything is perfection okay this book is perfection there's nothing wrong with this book however one thing actually that i don't love i mean i can see how it's kind of just like you know a joke and it's just to be funny i guess it does bother me a little bit how much olive in here is joking about wanting to kill her best friend because of the situations she's putting olive in involving adam right so this is fake dating and her best friend on is like doing things to put her in a certain situation where it's like incredibly awkward with her and dr carlson adam i don't like how much like it's really dramatic how much she talks about wanting to kill her best friend and the ways she's wanting to do it it's just a little too much for me sometimes but that's not gonna really take away from this book enough for me you know to like give it a lower rating it's not going to affect that unless it just keeps getting worse and worse but i don't see why that would happen it was just like a couple times where i was like that's a little unnecessary and kind of morbid but i know i get it it's 
it's a joke but sometimes it just felt a little i don't know but that's fine um it has nothing to do with the romance or anything else so this book is absolutely feeling like a five star at this point so yeah very very much loving it and i don't want to read the fourth book now <laughs> especially because i don't want to take it on my trip and it's a low rated book so i have really low expectations for it and i think it might not be great so after reading this masterpiece <laughs> i don't want to read a low rated book but we shall see it probably won't get done it won't happen until after i get back from my trip so after this clip i won't see you for a little while you'll see me in a couple seconds but i won't see you that is going to be the update there i'll see you sometime next week wow hi okay so this vlog is so chaotic and it's taking me a very long time to get through it in real time for me this has been like almost a whole month long vlog which is really annoying for me um i'm not enjoying that i just want to get this over with and move on with my life so i guess let me um update you wow you like this new setup this actually is so cute um i wish i had my tripod actually i think i do hold on yeah so if you didn't know here we go okay so if you didn't know i cleared off my desk that i have here in my bedroom because it was just like a place where i threw all of my laundry and like computer stuff and everything was just chaotic and really really messy and i decided that i finally needed to like clear it off and actually use it as a desk so i put this little plant in here and have like my laptop and some books everywhere you know i have this little cart that a lot of people use for like their tbr cart i just have some books on the top shelf here which are on my tbr so i guess you can call it a tbr cart but i just wanted to have some right next to my desk so that i could like see them and then i also put these twinkly lights along my window and stuff so that's why the lighting is kind of flashing um but yeah it's a really nice vibe and i'm totally loving this space now so it's actually a cute background for filming too so that's really exciting anyways for this vlog i need to finally update you on the love hypothesis i've already talked about it a lot on my channel now but i finished this and it is probably my new favorite romance book Ever. like it is so good I gave it five out of five stars obviously it I think has topped every other romance I've ever read and that's insane because this is a fake dating trope and before I <sighs> okay so I don't know if I want to say before because like it still is but I liked my favorite romance book was a friends to lovers romance which was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. So that was my favorite book. And now I think I, this one is my favorite book because I just fell in love with the two characters in here so much more. Like, I don't know, I felt the chemistry and I felt more love for the characters specifically in this one than I did with People We Meet on Vacation. But yeah, so this is fake dating and I found this to be like really stunning and really well done, which is so cute. You know, like I don't know what else to say other than it's freaking adorable. So yeah, I loved this one just because the characters and their chemistry, no pun intended, I mean it's biology I guess, but whatever, um, it was really cute and you know, totally fell in love with both of them and was rooting for them throughout the whole thing. And I didn't tab it, but I did like go and underline and highlight things obviously, and I wrote some stuff in there, but I want to reread it like now. Every day I think about picking it up and just reading it and pushing off everything else that I need to be reading right now. But I think I will plan to read this next month, so in December, because I really wanna go through and annotate again and put tabs in it so i definitely see why this is a freaking highest rating on goodreads it is so well deserved i think this is ali hazelwood's like first book is her debut if i'm not mistaken that's incredible so yeah if you haven't read this yet you need to read it totally love this book perfect literal perfection my favorite romance and my camera's gonna die so hold on a second okay also am i out of focus Okay, let's see how long I can go before the camera battery dies. So yeah, this is the next one that I need to be picking up and reading for a lowest rated. And I just don't feel like it. So I don't know if I'm going to or not. I need to edit this vlog and see where I'm at. And if I need to read a, f a fourth book. Because that's a lot 
for my brain and I don't know if I feel like reading this right now. I will at some point, just not maybe for this vlog, maybe in a new one. I don't know, I will update you on what I plan to do with this. Like, it sounds really interesting and I'm really wanting to read it because it has to do with like food in the restaurant industry in New York and coming of age and this girl and I don't know, it sounds interesting and I wanna see why it gets low ratings. So I will pick it up at some point, I just don't know when. I'll get back to you. Okay, hi guys. So it's the next day and I've decided that I'm not going to be reading the fourth and final book for this vlog. So I'm sorry if that is disappointing to any of you, but I promise I will read it at some point. I'm just not going to now because I want to wrap this vlog up and I want to be able to get it out there for you guys. So if I were to keep this going until I actually finished that fourth book, I feel like it would never see the light of day because I'm just wanting to read other books right now and wanting to film other vlogs. So that is what I decided to do. So yeah, that's going to be the end of this vlog now. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope it was interesting for you to see me read some high rated books and a low rated book so yeah i definitely will do this type of video again in the future because i love the idea of trying to pick up some books that are either loved or hated within the book community and see where i fall with them just to wrap up if you already forgot by this point, I really loved the two highest rated Akamath and the Love Hypothesis. The Love Hypothesis obviously was my favorite. And then I also enjoyed Catherine House, which was pretty decent for it being really low rated. That one got the average of 3.12 stars on Goodreads and that kind of blows my mind. I don't know why it's that low, but I was pleasantly surprised by it. And yeah, so that's that. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in my next video.